Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at this guy. The O1 High Resolution Tablet Oscilloscope. Inside the box we have uh, our sets of probes. We have our manual. And there's a disc in there as well. Inside this bag is the scope. Let's get it out and have a look. So in the outer pockets, we have our charger. And that is uh, 12 volts at 4 amp. And we have our probes. OW3100 probes. And then inside of here is the prize. The O1 TA0310 or TAO3104A 14 bit high resolution tablet oscilloscope. I think this is going to be pretty cool. So here it is. It's about the size of a uh, regular 8 by 10 sheet of paper on the bottom you see here it says DC power supply 12 volts max power when charging 40 watts when not charging 15 watts battery 7.4 volts and over here on the right side we have this panel which is where we have our probe compensation setting trigger out USB device USB host LAN and our DC input this is a multi-touch touchscreen display. Let's fire it up. Let me adjust the camera here. All right, so as you can see, it's a four-channel oscilloscope and touchscreen. which is very nice. Go to our main menu here. We have trigger menu, acquire menu, utility, display, save, measure, cursor, math, decode, auto scale, uh, PF, XY, FFT, and our horizontals. So let's uh, hook up a probe. Grab one of these guys here. And we'll hook it up over here to the compensations part and we'll get her adjusted. All right. She's hooked up there. Hit the auto set. Very good. Perhaps I'm missing something. Configure. One moment, please. All right, I'm not quite sure what was going on with the uh, calibration settings. Everybody can see I've got everything working fine. I'm using a uh, one megahertz full can oscillator there. And you can see we are getting 1 megahertz at 6 volts peak to peak. So that's working out quite well. Now what's nice about this is, like I said, it is a multi-touch screen. 
you can zoom in, zoom out, zoom up, zoom down, move it where you want, and also adjust the triggers where you want. So you can zoom right in there and get a real nice look at the waveforms. Let's go back in here. In our acquire menu, acquire mode, we can do sample, peak detect, or average. We can do 8-bit. Now we're at 14-bit. Take a look at that. You can get right in there and look right at those functions that ringing there. Let's come in here and go to display on a scale measure. We can even bring in the FFT and take a look at that as well. Very nice. FFT peak on. There's our peak right there. Then we could bring up the measurements and have a look at that as well. So we'll turn off the FFT. Have a look here at our trigger menu. Different types of triggers we have single edge, video, pulse, slope, run, windows, timeout, nth edge, single logic, and bus. And we have cursors. We can adjust those as well. There's our A and our B cursor. Say we want to measure that peak to peak there. Just like that, we have a delta 6.56 volts. So there's voltage. We can also do time. If we want to see what that rise time there is looking like. Twenty-six nanoseconds and we can also do both time and voltage at the same time excellent excellent this scope is really really nice we have our different math modes that we can do and we also have decoding the bus trigger menu has to be set up and I'm not going to mess with that we also have auto scale where it just brings everything in beautifully for you there's our small window and our large window. We can do an XY mode. And also we can set up a pass fail. So as long as your waveform fits in there. Yeah, this thing's killer. Channel 1. And you can also adjust via these nice knobs here. Triggers, all that stuff there. We now also have the copy button. So we can select a waveform to save, type wave source, channel one, save. And now it's saved. So this being a battery operated scope, it kind of eliminates most of the problems you have when you want to probe something that is attached to the mains. Because what you have to remember is when you're dealing with a BNC connector, that inner pin is your signal, that outer pin is the ground, and that goes directly back to the ground in your household electric. You hook it up backwards, you get a kaboom. Nobody wants a kaboom. Turn channel 2 off. Yeah, this is a beautiful scope. I'm really enjoying playing with it. There's so many things it can do. Uh, unfortunately, O1 does not want me to take this apart and show you the insides, and I'm going to respect that. We're just going to look at the features of the scope. So, this is our 1 megahertz signal. Let's bring in something a little faster. Let's see. Let's try 10, maybe. How do you think about that? All right, so I'm going to power off our signal here. Pop out that can. And I'll show you what I'm doing.
pop out the can. Just want to make sure I get it back in place nicely. We'll bring in a new can. Get her in there. Get everything plugged in. Powered on. Hit the auto set. So there's a 10 megahertz signal. And with that high 14 bit resolution, I mean, you look at that. We are just really, really digging in there. That is beautiful. It's a fantastic scope. I really enjoy it. Let's take a look at something even a little bit quicker. So this is 100 megahertz. So we're, we're definitely beyond the 3 dB point of this scope. So we're going to see some attenuation here. Oh, sorry. That's the 1 megahertz one. I meant to grab the 100. Still not fully recovered from bronchitis and pneumonia, so forgive me for being a dumb dumb sometimes. All right, auto set. So yeah, you can see it's showing us three kilohertz. It really can't deal with that, and that's to be expected as it's only a hundred megahertz scope. So no worries there. So the crystal we're looking at here is uh, 28.224 megahertz. For some reason, it's not showing me the frequency very well. There looks like we're getting a little bit of a fluctuation or something. But I wanted to show you was the FFT, the peak there. So our format is in DB, our window is hamming. Our display. We will do, uh, yeah, so that's good. And peak is off. Yeah, I don't know why it's not showing us the frequency. But still, very cool. I mean, if you don't have a uh, spectrum analyzer, well, you'd have one now, wouldn't you? Beautiful scope. I'm really enjoying this. This is not a cheap scope. This thing sells for a little over $500, but if it's something you need, it's something you need. And what's really cool, you know, you got the strap back here. So it is absolutely perfect for automotive work. Not grounded. You're not going to blow anything up. Probably. No guarantees. That'd be up to you. But yeah, what a fantastic scope. Really love this one. I want to thank Owan for sending this out to us free of charge for our consideration. I want to thank you guys for watching. This is just our first look. We're going to delve into this guy a little bit deeper in the future. But it's so cool. I just wanted to show it to you and share it with you guys. So once I learn a little bit more about it, we'll get deeper into it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you guys for watching. I wouldn't be here without you. Check out the patron link down below, buck a month. You can get in on our monthly Zoom calls. That's it. I'm out. Peace.